Mr. Green. Voitot pankkitilillesi viidessä minuutissa. Hi, this is Midi. And Daniel. From Boudin After Midnight and you're watching Chaos TV. Okay, so hello everyone, Chaos TV is to you, he, here at On The Rocks in Kallio, Finland, and we have Daniel and Midi from Budom After Midnight as guests. So first of all, hello guys, how is it going for you at the moment? Thank you, uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, and and of course now we're pretty much focused on the upcoming release of the EP and, and all what goes with it. Like, Yeah, a lot of press and promotional stuff so, you, so obviously you have had quite a lot of happenings during the last year so how would it, you sum it up yourself i don't know if it's it's been such a you know, kind of a roller coaster of feelings like for the past year or like the beginning of course we were all excited for the new band and And first it was like we were excited to go on tour. Well, then COVID happened and tours got canceled or postponed. It and then we kind of changed the plans to record an EP. Um, and well, then we got that finished and then all, it all went pretty much down. So, yeah, finally the <clears throat> big hit to the wall, so to speak, which happened uh, on New Year. So, yeah, a lot of obstacles in the beginning of 2020, the corona thing. and But then um, on the positive side, at least we got something to, something recorded and something to release because of the corona that changed our plans quite a lot. So obviously you had the chance still to play a couple of shows with the band last October. So what kind of experience it was? And also for MIDI, because you are known to be playing rock bands and now you get to play some metal music. So how was it for you? Well, of course it was like different from what I've used to and, and I haven't really played that many shows during the few previous years. So, but then again, it was like, I remember when, you know, jumping into the van and, and driving up to play the first show, it was like, I felt instantly that I was like back home and like this is what I should be doing. Of course now the band was totally different and music was very different for what I used to but then again we had rehearsed for the shows like for the whole year pretty much since the the original plan was to play first shows in I guess April of 2020. So we have prepared pretty well for the shows that we have so I could really actually enjoy it and not be that, you know, thrown into the deep end so much. Yeah, I mean, um, even there was only three shows, it kind of felt that we were playing like a three tours together um, because the guys, the new guys pulled out so well, probably because we had uh, rehearsals so much, like uh, months in a row just for the live set. So yeah, I wasn't worried about even a sec that these guys wouldn't do a good, so good job. And um, they actually pushed me and Alexi to probably play it a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was at the Seinauki show and, and it really felt that the band was on fire. So did it feel that way for you as well? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, totally. And like starting from the first song that we played, like I was like, all right, this is it, this is gonna work and it's gonna fly. So, and, and now looking back on the shows, you know, their importance to me has grown even more since, unfortunately we were lucky to have even those three shows. It would have been a bummer if those were would have uh, gotten canceled as well, so. Yeah, you really were you, of those. you were lucky in a way because in the in the rest of the world, no shows were happening at the time. Yeah, and after those shows, I think the restrictions went back. To yeah, I think yeah, I think hard, so too. So it was probably impossible to do shows at all after that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, but also like when I was watching the show, I felt that Alexi had sort of like regained his energy and, and he was playing like really well live again. Not going to say that he's ever <laughs> been bad at playing live, but it, it really felt that he had that energy and fire again for playing. So what was his thoughts when he finished those shows? Well, he o- he often told us that he feels like 20 years younger and probably told that to the media as well. So I guess it kind of showed and uh, he was like super excited and uh, happy about those shows. Even they were like a half of the cap. Yeah, but still he was like a excited as it would be his first show or something. Yeah, I think he said to me after the show when I when I saw him like fastly that he hasn't like felt this in a long time that it it he sort of like gained a lot from playing those shows that it was like after waiting for such a long time to be yeah. finally able to play it felt so good to be back and do what he does best yeah and it, like he said like he hasn't had this long of a break from touring yeah ever pretty much after it started so maybe that had something to do with it as well yeah i guess he said something like he had a totally free summer 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was not his kind of way to go for yeah. the summer. Yeah. I guess it's full of festivals normally. Mm. <laughs> so speaking about like the upcoming EP, at what point did you start writing it? Summer 2020? Yeah. Somewhere early summer? Yeah, and, and it was, you know, we kind of wrote it here and there since... You know, we had shows coming and then they were postponed or canceled again since nobody knew what the situation was. So we're like, we started working on it and then gave it up for a while for because we got the chance to do the couple of shows that we were talking about. Yeah, so we had to focus on shows for a while, but the, then those got canceled and we went back to writing mode. And Yeah, so it was pretty much on and off yeah. until we played those October shows. And after that, actually, we got like seriously and more into the writing and since we had all the studios booked back by then and so for you daniel you were part of obviously with children of bottom when they wrote hexed album so Mm. how different was this whole writing process for the ep compared to what it was with bottom or was it same or pretty much same um alexi i think he has only one way to work and um Everybody else will have to kind of come along. <laughs> so, yeah, same kind of process. I think the band inputs was probably bottom after midnight. There was probably a little bit more of band band's input on arrangement side, but uh, the process was pretty much similar. Musically, the upcoming EP is is a bit more old school when it comes to like the music itself and i get that old school sort of like children of bottom feel from the songs so was that also something that he was aiming more with the songs now that you also played some older stuff live more as well i don't know he probably didn't plan that ahead that much because he usually is a very spontaneous writer and uh yeah I think maybe it has more to do with just like kind of this fresh start with a new band, maybe like it wasn't probably a conscious like thing to do, but maybe it came natural, but it's really hard to say. And it's just maybe us guessing here more than knowing. So, so obviously the song Payback, Payback's a bitch is lyrically quite interesting. So did he ever tell you what it is about? No, because it's so easy to make that point about the former band oh but well he didn't tell what it was about actually but when we asked about it uh that was it uh about the the former band he said no absolutely not it okay. had nothing to yeah. do with that it's a some yeah. totally different story because that was on the fan forum like first thing after yeah. those lyrics came out that that this song is sort of like pointing to the previous yeah. band but that far we know that it's not about that at all so yeah, it, yeah. it's something totally different yeah yeah it's just putting out his aggressions like <laughs> yeah. normally so to say yeah. yeah so obviously 
before this band started, you you played with Children of Bottom the final show in Ice Hall. So, mm-hmm. what kind of memories does that bring into your mind? Ooh. Well, uh, at the time, it was like a pretty much normal show, just bigger. But uh, we try to execute it as a normal show. But yeah, obviously, good memories. But you really didn't think that at the time that this is going to be the last show. At least I felt that. And I really, yeah, kind of came afterwards that, geez, that was the last show. <laughs> okay, so, so, but you were also sort of like planning this new band ahead, so you didn't oh, feel yeah. that it was sort of like an ending in yeah, a way. Yeah, I knew that we and Alex are going to stick together and uh, continue with another band, and that was already decided before that, the last show. So... Yeah, probably that's why I didn't felt that this were the final farewells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but did it still feel like emotional playing it, even though you weren't in the band for Not, a long time? But the, that band has like a very meaningful mm-hmm. history in Finnish metal and also metal in general. Not on the stage that much, but afterwards, yes, yeah. So obviously, Alexi was very influential in in the world of metal both in Finland and also worldwide. Mm. So what, in your opinion, made him such an ex- ex- exceptional musician? Uh, I don't know. In in some way, maybe the fact, it's really hard to put a finger on it, but maybe the fact how he combined different styles and made it like maybe more accessible in some way, I guess. Since like uh, Bodum was one of the the first like heavier bands that I got like introduced to, and that introduced me to a bigger world behind it. So I don't know, maybe that, but among like multiple things, of course. Yeah, and he created a very unique style of music, combining those different styles yeah. <laughs> elements. But also, as he, you know, his guitar playing even though it was very uh, technical and fast and whatnot but it also like uh, they were really memorable stuff that he pulled out yeah it it isn't just like some progressive stuff yeah. that it's basically yeah, they, forgotten they, quite easily yeah they were always catchy and his solos you know served the song mm. Yeah, I think he said that he don't want to do a solo if it doesn't belong to the song. Yeah. And I think he had that mentality throughout his career. Yeah. And not many guitar players can pull, you know, combine technical playing and interesting playing. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. Did you actually learn something from making songs with him and, and playing with him and touring with him? Is there something that you have actually learned from him? Probably a lot of things. Um, probably something that I don't really even think about it. Yeah. But uh, they probably had stuck to my mind. <laughs> so it's hard to pinpoint just one thing or another. But uh, sure. <laughs> I guess attitude is at, at least some that everybody can learn from well, him that, because yeah, he was he was living sure. and breathing music yeah. like twenty four seven. Yeah. And music was the thing that mattered him the most. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, I remember this one time, like, where I was talking about when we were recording the EP, like, uh, I think it was our producer, Jonas, who was asking Alex, like, how can you, like, how is it possible since he had all the songs in his head and he had the kind of vision of it? Like, how how do all these things, like, fit in your head? He's like, well, that's pretty much all there is. So he could... What I mean is like he was really breathing and living through the music. And that was his only thing that he was like, except cars maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess that's also the reason why he became what he was. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like most definitely that's the thing like you have to do it full on or not do it at all, I guess. If you want to reach that kind of a level. So obviously, as, as I already mentioned, Alexi was like really inf- influential here in Finland. So have you thought about doing some kind of tribute show for him when the time is right? Or or is that something that you don't want to talk at, at this point? We haven't thought about it seriously, but um, 
I don't know. I think that's a guy who deserves that show. Yeah, but maybe yeah, it's. But it's probably. We have to wait that the world opens again, and then we, and probably process this yeah. thing before yeah, yeah. we can start seriously think about something like that. Yeah, like you say, when the time is right. Well, none of us can tell when yeah. it's even possible to, you know, play shows. So it's really weird to start thinking about that right now, and it doesn't feel right. It's, it, it feels so distant. So obviously, this was for you career-wise quite a shock as well. So. Have you already decided that what will you continue doing next with music yourself? Well, a uh, little bit, yeah. Uh, I have project that I've been working on for a while, which been has been on hold for a while too. But uh, yeah, some of your previous bands or or a new band. Uh, I'm not gonna announce it yet, but. Um, Probably by the end of the year, you will hear about it. Okay. So yeah, something is cooking, but uh, I don't know. I could probably do other other things as well, or maybe another band. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty open to anything at the moment. But uh, yeah, we don't have, we can't play shows for a while. That's for sure. So yeah. What about you, Midi? Well, pretty much in the line of Daniel, so like I'm open to. To anything and and you know eager to start something new but uh but i haven't really given it much thought like at the moment since i want to like you know finish this thing properly and then give myself a bit of a time and then see what feels right and what's interesting to me since i don't see a point just you know start playing for the sake of playing it has to be something that you're like really into Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Being a musician isn't like just jumping from job to job. You have to also have the passion for what you yeah. do. Exactly. So, hey, guys, thank you a lot for your time and, and okay. all the best for the future. Anything you want to say as last words to all the fans watching this afterwards? You can look for that camera there. <laughs> Anything you want to say? <laughs> you want to add something? Well, check the paint the sky with the blood. Yeah, and take care. <laughs>